Hey guys, Gas TV here with another Path of Exile video. And in this one, I'm going to tackle one of the suggested League Starter builds for 3.20 Forbidden Sanctum. Now, GGG has a tendency of nerfing builds that are played by a vast majority of the player base and not builds that are obnoxiously overpowered. This creates a scenario where there's plenty of very, very strong builds in the game that are simply staying clear of getting nerfed. One of those examples rather recently has actually been Seismic Trap, which a lot of the racers want to get nerfed. It's not happening because not enough people are actually playing it. Another one of those builds is the one I'll be suggesting today, and that is the Dark Pact build. Dark Pact Necromancer has been a super strong solid build for the longest of times, originating back from the days where Ravion, well, actually the original designer of this a long time ago, played it as a Delirium Farmer, very, very tanky. Nowadays, we have a lot of different variations of this build, and it's super solid as a league starter, and because not enough people are playing it, it's one of the strongest builds in the entire game, and one of my personal favorites. So in the descriptions below, you'll see three different links. One goes to the detailed written guide, which is included in the PUB, and the other two covers more in-depth both offensive and defensive scaling mechanics this build brings to the table. The low-budget version is, of course, the one we're focusing on this, both this video and in the written guide. It's capable of killing endgame bosses and high tier maps, wearing cheap, simple items such as Tabula Rasa and the unique gloves of Vol Caress, which we're utilizing to increase the levels of our Vol Summon Skeletons and therefore their HP. Now, the Skeleton's health is what dictates the base damage we'll deal with the Dark Pact. By summoning them first and then casting Dark Pact, it will bounce between the Skeletons, hitting any and all targets within range multiple times. Due to the importance of our Skeleton's health, it is fair to say that both the Vault Caress combined with the Vault Summon Skeleton Gem would be the initial items to get for yourself with this character. My written guide for the build covers every single detail, such as the leveling progression, which can be done in a variety of different styles ranging from spellcasting to using the Absolution minions, but I personally prefer to level with the ability that I'm expected to use at the endgame if possible, and Dark Pact offers this possibility. Is granted, it is a little bit slower, but it's definitely more enjoyable. So it's all up to you. I strongly recommend checking the written guide for these details, and I do want to mention that every single guide will be updated before the league launches, as the numbers you're about to see are for the 3.19 POB. And do keep in mind again, every single guide in my guide hub will be updated before the league launches, so you don't have to worry about a thing. Quick little break here to fully understand this build. It is crucial that you subscribe to the channel, hit the like button and leave a comment down below saying "ah," or you're going to be shot down on the seven seas of Ray Blast. <laughs> This is the low budget PUB for the Dark Pact character. The tree here is basically very straightforward. And in the bottom left corner, you can actually change to the initial stages of leveling trees. As you can see here, as a witch, you will be starting off by taking the spell damage nodes and picking up Enduring Bond and some life nodes. The reason we do this is to allow you to level with things like either spellcasting if you want to, but also moving into things like summon raiding spirits or absolution, which will be very, very nice if you prefer to level with those things. The next step of the loving tree is what I would prefer to do, which is level 28, upon which you can get Dark Pact. Slightly slower, but way more enjoyable in my opinion, and this is where HP of our minions plays a big role. This is where you're going to start removing these nodes and start getting the Indomitable Army, as well as picking up Lower the Dead through the minion life nodes, and getting some extra cast speed for our minions if you want to go for this, and actually enabling Petrified Blood. This will allow us to be on low HP, which will give us 30% more spell damage. After this, then the rest of the nodes will start progress for the next area, which will be up here in the corner. And you can skip these life nodes till the very last of the skill tree by moving on to the left hand side for the chaos damage nodes and the wither, as well as some more HP nodes for our minions, HP nodes for ourselves together with the mastery. And we can also pick up the uh, vampirism, which will 3.20 will actually be located in this area of the tree. So do keep that in mind as well as the Infused Flesh. This will actually help us sustain our HP very, very well. And we're going to rush over to the left-hand side to pick up Spiritual Aid, as we're going to start ascending by moving in through Magnus Aggression down to Bone Barrier, because these are the biggest damage increases that we can get on the actual tree. The finalized tree will start picking up some extra nodes across the board. We're going to run some Lethe Shade, as well as getting some extra Life and uh, Leeches and whatnot. These details will be covered in the written guide and also in the two videos linked in the descriptions below. 
that covers the necessity and how these mechanics work because they're very complex. I made entire videos about them. So to avoid this video taking too long, I'd recommend checking those out if you're interested in trying this build out. Something that's really crucial is actually the idea of Blessed Rebirth. There's two things I want to point out here. One is that for the higher endgame content, speci specifically bosses, Bless Rebirth is very, very important. This makes your skeletons immune to damage from enemies for the first four seconds. And since we are casting Dark Pact on them, sacrificing some of their HP, th that will still do damage to them. They will at least not die from other sources as you're casting your damage output. In the higher body version or the higher endgame variants of this type of build, you're going to want to run something like a Divergent Dark Pact, which will actually make your skeletons more or less immune to damage as you're hitting them. So that's something you want to look into for the red tier or endgame bosses. You can get one of those. It's very, very cheap. You can craft it yourself. And in most cases, you actually farm them. But you just get a, a passive jewel with minion life or a medium cluster with a minion life and an alteration craft up and a blessed rebirth and you'll have it. It's very, very straightforward, very easy to do. The third lab will be Mr. Sacrifice as we're going to want to have a trigger craft on our one, which I'll cover in a bit. And then having Bone Offering, which gets us a ton of extra defensive layers through the sake of blocking. This is why I prefer the Necromancer over the Occultist version, which can also be a very, very good play for the Dark Pact build in general. But I prefer the Necromancer because of the Mysteries of Sacrifice. And lastly, we take Command of Darkness to alleviate some pressure on our gear when it comes to resistances. Outside of this, we'll be looking at the gear pieces. And like I mentioned before, gear pieces are very straightforward. We can run a roomish concoction if you want to as a flask for the sake of extra blocking. We're going to have a diamond flask and we're going to have two enduring mana flasks. The reason we're going to have enduring mana flask is to make sure that the mana problems you might encounter is completely taken care of. However, when you get more accustomed to this character or this type of build, you should be more than fine with running one of these. But my low body build guide is actually suggesting to, to help you get used to the build. But do keep in mind that as soon as you're getting more comfortable with it, drop one of these flasks. Get something else like a utility flask, like a um, granite flask from the roomy, so you can have a basalt flask instead for better defense if you so wish. And obviously then a quick silver flask. Medium cluster we already talked about. The other unique pieces is obviously a darkness and throne since the minion HP is so important for our base damage. We want to have jewels that give us actual minion HP, which is then scaled by the darkness and throne. So HP and minion life is very crucial. Same thing with the Cobalt Jewels outside the Darkness and Throne. You want to have HP and again, minion life across the board. That's the way we scale this build. Volcares, like I mentioned, only scales your Vol skills. So keep in mind that the other uh, skills you put in here will not be scaled. But this is the best way and the cheapest way to make sure that you actually maintain a high amount of HP in your Skeletons. And you also get to get some extra free Onslaught when you cast the Vol Summon Skeletons. I do have a tendency of very rarely using Vol Summon Skeletons because you want your Dark Pact to hit uh, your Skeletons that is actually close to the boss target. Tabata Rasa, obviously any rare 6 link would be way better than this, but you can actually self-farm a Tabata Rasa, and I use, tend to use a Tabula as a baseline chest piece for most of my build guys because it's a very affordable, self-farmable, cheap version of getting 6 links. And for caster builds as well as minion builds, links to your main skill gem is more important than most other things. Helmet is a very cheap option. Obviously, having plus level of minion skills would be way better. But to keep the budget down, I don't even have that modifier on the helmet to show that the numbers are very good, even without reasonable gear. Shield, you want to get uh, preferably something with block spell damage that could come from the Shaper influence, for example. And obviously, if you're able to get some critical strike chance for spells, that's very, very good. Life and energy shield across the board would be nice. The shield is a little bit uh, better than what uh, you'd expect to see, yeah, I'd assume. But the thing is, you just want to have some extra critical strike chance and block spell damage to help alleviate. If you have high tiers of these or not, it doesn't really matter. Wand is actually very, very easy to get a hold of. Plus level of either uh, minion skills or spell skills together with critical strikes for spells or spell damage. Uh, and then having a suffix open for a trigger, even cast speed or critical strike multiplier will all be very, very attractive for this build. Uh, and what's really funny with this is that a lot of people are crafting plus two minion ones in the game for profit for all the minion players. And because of that, you can very easily find very cheap versions of these ones where instead of a level of all spell skills, it's a level of one minion skill, which means that suddenly that item is no longer attractive for that many builds and mostly is targeting Dark Pact. And as I mentioned earlier in this video, most people don't play Dark Pact. 
which means that the very big items for this build is surprisingly cheap. As a small little side note, I can tell you this, in 319 I made a glass cannon version that we did to carry six-man HP feared runs with this, and we had about 220 million shape for DPS. It's a very high budget build, and despite that, the prices for the items I purchased was almost nothing. Most of the pieces were like a couple of divines, some pieces even purchased for five chaos. So a build like this, with the way it's designed, basically wants failed minion crafts because it's a caster build and not a minion build. So do keep an eye on that and understanding these things helps a lot in terms of keeping the cost down of crafting and also to keeping the cost down of purchasing items. Boots, just generic life, energy shield, movement speed, amulets. I have oil of the retribution together with HP and a dexterity base. You're going to want to get some resistances, of course, and stats. Make sure that you cover your attributes as needed and also cap your resistances based on these gear pieces, which are not in the PUB. They've only been configured in the configuration here to show that you should be doing those things. And if you can get Chaos Rest, that's preferable. A Bone Ring would be nice because they can roll minion life, of course. An Onset Ring would be required for the sockets. And outside of that, we've already covered most things in here. And again, in the early stage, you're not going to have a weapon like this. I would recommend looking for something that has plus level of all spells or level of minions with an open craft for the trigger. That alone would get you started. If you think those are too expensive, get something with a decent spell damage, maybe a little bit of crit, get some cast speed, and then put the trigger craft. And that's more than enough to cover the first stages of mapping. Yellow tier maps, maybe even up to red tier maps. The build's just doing an obnoxious amount of damage. Uh, right now, we're sitting on 3.7 million Shaper DPS. I'd say that in solo cell phone gear, early stage, you'll be easily sitting between 2 and 3 million Shaper DPS very reliably as you start playing in a new league. Skill-wise, like I mentioned, we're going to have the Onset Ring, and that is because we're going to have room for an Assassin's Mark. This helps us get some power charges, but most importantly, it gives us extra crit, which is how we're going to scale our damage outside of the base damage we get from the HP or Skeletons. The Dark Pacts are going to be linked with Spell Echo, Arcane Surge, Intensify, Void Manipulation, and Chain. So what's really interesting here is why we're using chain, and that is because when we're casting it on skeletons, it actually chains between the skeletons, and each skeleton it chains to counts as a new unique hit, and that's how it's pseudo shotguns. And what that means is that normally, when you cast one spell once, no matter how many times that chains, it can only hit one target once for that specific cast. Dark Pack doesn't work that way. Dark Pack hits different skeletons with a chain, and each skeleton then pumps out this damage from you. So every chain actually counts as unique hit. So in this specific version, we'll have Dark Pack plus the normal chain support. Every cast hits five times as long as you have five skeletons out to be chained around. So this is how we run it. Intensify is a very good clear speed increaser, and it gives you better single target if you're staying stationary. Arcane Surge will help with the mana and also gives you tons of extra damage. In the trigger, I usually tend to use Convocation to keep my Animate Guardian, which is not in the low-budget version normally, uh, but keeping my Utility Spectres alive and, uh, you know, just keeping them on top of you to avoid taking damage. This is helping with the Utility Minions in general, which is the Spectres for the most part. We're using Bone Offering and Desecrate. Keep in mind that the Desecrate needs to be above the Offering to make sure they're triggered in the correct order. Outside of that, we're using an arrogant support for vitality and clarity. The reason for this is to make sure that our HP is not reserving more than 50% because we're using petrified blood. And petrified blood means that we can only get above 50% of our life if we use a life flask. And we want to make sure that we keep that, but not entirely there because of the leech mechanic. This is a very detailed and rather complex mechanic, which is why I have an entire video covering this in the descriptions below. In the gloves, we're going to use a Vol Summer Skeleton. Again, I will stress how important it is that it is a Vol Summer Skeleton because the Vol Caress gloves will only give plus levels to Vol Gems. Despite the level drop on the non-Vol Gems, we will be using a Minion Life to keep ramping up their HP. It is the cheapest, most effective way in the early stage to get them high HP. We'll use a Flame Dash in here because it doesn't really matter what level it is for this uh, state of the build. Feeding Frenzy is just to make sure that the minions are actually dashing towards enemies when you're clearing, so you don't have to resummon too often. In the uh, utility setup, we'll be using a Ray Spectre with Orb of Storms, Power Charge on Crit, and Minion Life. They don't have to be falling, you can split them up if you want to. The only thing that's important here is that Orb of Storms and Power Charge on Crit is linked, and the Ray Spectre with the Minion Life is linked. The Spectres we'll be using here is detailed in descriptions in the uh, written guide. The reason I don't want to talk too much about them right now is because there might be some changes to it, 
but they will be utility specters, very likely still going to generate charges in the form of uh, frenzy charges, which would be Carnage Chieftains. But again, double check the written guide before the league launches, because there might be changes. The power charge and crit over storms allows you to precast an overstorm versus a boss to generate power charges without you having higher budget gear pieces that will do this for you with the bigger investments. Aura setup, like I mentioned before, Petrified Blood, we're also going to be running a Discipline to help us with some extra Energy Shield because this build will pack its defenses through both Life and Energy Shield and Leeching on both ends, or having Recoup Life and Energy Shield Leeching. Again, details of this in the description. We'll be using a Spell Totem with Wither, and the reason we do this is to precast versus a boss a Spell Totem, which will cast Wither, which will increase the damage taken from uh, chaos damage taken by the enemies. And this is also scaled further with the Corruption node from the actual tree. So outside of that, we'll have an Unset Ring for the Assassin's Mark to make room for that. And then obviously Bone Armor Skill, which we're getting from the Bone Armor or Bone Barrier Ascendancy node. And that kind of covers the details of this build. I hope you guys enjoy it. I hope you guys will enjoy it. For those of you who haven't played it, it is without a doubt one of my favorite builds in the game. Super strong and not too many people are playing it, which makes it even more interesting because of how cheap some of the bigger items actually can be for the higher investments. But let me know in the comments below what you guys think of this type of format we've done with the build guide. And uh, I hope you guys actually paid attention to the that uh, super violent, aggressive pirate we saw earlier calling you guys to sub. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Till then, stay safe and keep rocking.